So predicting solubility in water. What's the big deal? Well, all of us are really walking bags of water, if you think about it. And knowing what dissolves in water and how well, and predicting the degree to which, I don't know, predict your drug. I mean, it, it's not going to completely dissolve in water. I mean, it's not going to completely go into your system. In fact, if you take Advil, about 92%, you just whiz right out. It goes right in the environment. That goes for pretty much any drug. Because these drugs are these organic compounds, all carbons and hydrogens, they don't dissolve very well. They're not ionic crystals at all. Uh, a Twinkie, I mean, looks, I don't know if he really dissolved or not. It looks like he just turned in, into mush over, over four days. But this is a cartoon of a research project that we did. A lot of folks in, in San Antonio, uh, diabetic, they're taking a drug called naproxen. So it was interesting to see, can we find naproxen in, because uh, all, all the toilets go to the water treatment plant, right? So we, it was gross, we got some water from the water going into the water treatment plant, analyzed it for naproxen and ibuprofen and some other stuff, and then we grabbed the water that was coming out of the water treatment plant. Again, analyzed it for naproxen and ibuprofen and things. We found it in both places. And that's nationwide, that's worldwide, because our water treatment plants aren't built to get these little organic compounds out of water, right? And, and remember, you take prescription drugs, that's where it's all going, down, down the toilet, 92% of it. So it's, it's getting to be a problem. And the, the animals and the environment that the water just goes right through their skin, like frogs especially, they're the ones that are getting hit the hardest right now. And it's, it's developing into a real problem. Anyway, so we're not, so I'm just saying dissolving is not always great, right? You gotta, track of it, but it's happening. What happens when an ionic solid dissolves in water? Let's take a little, see what's going on here. You can find the movie. An ionic solid dissolves in water because of its polar nature. Notice how water molecules become attached to the ions of a sodium chloride crystal in the process called hydration. Positively charged sodium ions attract the partial negative yeah, charge of the that. oxygen in water. A similar attraction occurs between negatively charged chloride ions and the there hydrogen atoms, which have a partial positive charge. These interactions loosen the attractions between the ions in the crystal, dislodging them from the crystal. Additional water molecules surround the released ions, insulating them from attraction to other ions. So water can break up some crystals, not all. And that's really the name of the game where we're playing today is just what crystals can water break up in water, right? Can water break up? Okay. And we have a set of solubility rules. You'll have this available for the quiz and, and the exams and things. But I just want to go over it a little bit. Let's make sure we see the, tech, see the terminology first. Paulina, if the crystal dissolves, do you say it's soluble or do you say it's insoluble? Soluble, right? Insoluble means it's not going to dissolve. Insol which one would mean, Brianna, you're going to have a precipitate? Which word would you use? Like precipitate is that hunk of solid on the bottom where it's just a nice cloudy solution or something. Insoluble. Insoluble means you're going to get a precipitate. Insoluble means you're going to get this cloudy, milky solution. Right? Okay, so here's, here's the rules, and you can use the book's rules, but this is what I'm going to be giving you on the quiz, so just, I guess, just learn how to use it is all, all we're going to really do. And it, we're going to predict, predict precipitates, predict whether things will dissolve really well or not, and predict what, if this ion does break up, what does it break up into in water? That's the goal for today. So here's the game plan. I kind of drew a rule here. Let's knock out first what's easy, right? Knock out first what always, always, always dissolves. And then you can just, don't have to read anymore, right? You don't have to go into the details of this whole game plan if you pick out the easy ones first. So that's what this is all about. It's number one. So you're supposed to do these in order because you do the easy stuff first. So you look at the cation. Now, if you see an ionic crystal, 
or an ionic compound, uh, Victoria. Where's the cation? Is that the first dude or the second dude? Right? Because they're always, yeah, these compounds, there's something here, and then there's something there. Which one's the cation? It's always the first one. Right? It's always the first one. All right? Because these guys are all plus something and minus something. All right? Okay, so you look at the cation. And if it's any of these, or ammonium, it's always soluble. It'll always dissolve. Now, Gloria, dang. You have to memorize all this? No, it's given on the quiz. But let's say you lose the quiz or you can't read it. Where are these lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium? Where are they on the periodic table? They're all the first group. They're all in the first group. Remember, we kind of talked about how groups react similarly? Yeah. So they're all in that first group. If you're in that first group of elements, they'll always dissolve. And then you have the little ammonium that, that tags along, too, that polyatomic ion NH4+. OK. So you, if you get your question answered there, oh, this guy is sodium, lithium, or potassium, or rubidium, or ammonium, you quit. Oh, he completely dissolves. There's no way you're going to make a precipitate, or will you make a precipitate? How would you answer that question? Right? If you have sodium, lithium, or potassium here, would this guy form a precipitate? No. no. Right? So it, it's kind of like asking the same thing different ways. Right? Will you form a precipitate? No, because he's right, completely gonna, he's going to be soluble. Will he be insoluble? No. Right? He's soluble. You just have to get used to the terminology. And we will. OK, so if you can't answer the question with the first easy one, you go to the second easy one. The second easy one is right here. Okay, is that anion one of those two? Do you notice what's kind of happening here too? Isn't this going to help you? Now it's going to take, you only have so much time on quizzes and exams, but look, sulfate, SO4 negative 2. Chloride, acetate, nit the names and the formulas are given to you, right? So if you want to depend on this for, to help you with naming, you know, you, it can be a crutch, but it's a, <laughs> it's a crutch that's going to take some time. So you don't have a whole lot of time on quizzes, but I guess it's better than nothing. OK, so what I was getting at is what's easy rule number two that you're supposed to look at? Is this or this there? Now again, the anions are the second one. There's our anions. All right, here's our anions, and they're always negative. These guys are always positive. So if the anion right here is acetate or nitrate, you quit. That compound would be? Soluble or insoluble? Soluble, right? So that's going to knock out a lot of questions, just those two easy ones that will knock out a lot of things. OK. So if you can't get your questions answered with the first two, then you got to keep going, OK? And, then, and they're saying if it's a chloride anion, bromide, or iodide, soluble, OK? So it's not, it's, you're going to break it up. It's going to dissolve. Unless, now they see, now see how it starts getting complicated? Unless you have silver, mercury, or lead in there. So what would be an example of a precipitate? Well, they're written right here. Right, here's examples like silver chloride, silver bromide, silver iodide, right? Because even though it says common chlorides are soluble, you always break them up. They're always going to dissolve. You just have to check. Are one of these cations there? If it is, then no, it's going to form a solid. Hey, in a reaction, if I wrote AgCl, right, or AgNO3, what do I write as little subscripts here to recognize whether it's soluble or insoluble. A little s. OK. One of these, I have to put a little s on. It's going to be the AgCl. Now, you follow the rules. Oh, you see the nitrate, right? What do you put here? Not s, because s means solid. And not l, because l means pure liquid. You're supposed to put aq. I wish they would put 
I don't know, HY for hydrated, right? Because all the little waters, they break up this stuff. They break up the silver ions, they break up the nitrates, and they're sticking around there. They should write H. How do you, how do you spell hydrated? HY, I think. H-Y-D-R-A-T-E-D. -E but they don't. They don't write HY. They write AQ, like Desiree said. So you're supposed to write AQ. Okay. So that's the notation. And a lot of these sulfates, if you see sulfate, if you get that far in the game plan, oh, you're going to write AQ on it unless you see one of these guys. Right? So. Oh, let's see. How about uh, which one of these? Oh, let's see. What would you write? Thanks for asking. What would you write? for little subscripts on sodium sulfate. AQ, because remember you're supposed to start at the very top? No, it's alkali, so there's in this group one metal, so you write AQ. What do you write for strontium sulfate? All right, if you start at the top, you can't get your questions answered, because you're looking for strontium or sulfate, and then you come down here, okay, sulfates are hit, and it says soluble, so you would like to write AQ, but you've got to be careful, you've got to look at the exceptions. Is strontium in there? Ah, uh, yeah, it is. So you can't write AQ, because soluble means AQ. So you'd have to write S for solid. Yes, Taylor. Okay, I'm confused. Uh-huh. Sodium both sulfate? Silver. No, like the ones above. Like those, because they both have silver in them, so I thought they would both be S. Okay. Yes. Good point. Now, this is a common mistake. I'm glad you asked, Taylor. Because you have to start, for this game plan to work, it's a, it's a weird game plan. Why do you have to start at step number one? If something's logical, you'd think this is a fact, you can jump down to number six because it's a fact, right? It works. No. It only, this step only works, right? If this one doesn't work, right? That's what this whole game plan assumes. That you're down here because this one doesn't answer your question, because the next one, the previous one doesn't answer your question, and the one above it doesn't answer your question. That's how the game plan's organized. If we don't organize it that way, it gets a lot uglier. So. You always have to start at the top to try to answer the question. So even though these both have silver, it doesn't matter what they have. You always start with rule number one. Right? You always start with rule number one. We can't answer the question. We can't answer the question. Here. Here's where we can answer the first question because there's a nitrate. Ah, he's going to be AQ. That's why. You got to start at the top every single time. Make sense? Okay. If you don't, then yeah, it's going to be you're going to make some mistakes. Okay. So you're going down, going down. If you can't answer questions, right? At some point, you might hit something like carbonates and sulfides are insoluble. So what would be an example of one? That's a good question, Victoria. What would be an example of a carbonate that is insoluble. So I want to be able to write CO3 and an S on there. What could you write right here? <coughs> yeah, I want it to be, no, I want it to be uh, insoluble. I want it to, to be a precipitate. What could I write? It has to be a cation. has to be a cation though, right? So remember, all your cations are up here. And what Victoria can name, she can name anything, anything. Just don't name what? Just don't name what group? That first group. You can name anything, right? Iron three, right? So if she named iron three, Fe plus three, you got to be careful, though, I guess, right? Make sure it's not one of 
Oh, there aren't any exceptions for, for that rule number one. All right, there aren't any exceptions for carbonates. So that means, heck, name any cation. That'll get you all the way down to that rule. So you, that's why you can't name it group one. Because right at the very top, oh, it's gonna dissolve. All right. so that would be a two, this would be a three. So for example, lithium carbonate, let's say she named lithium carbonate. Would that be a precipitate? Would that be insoluble? No, because it, rule number one knocks it out. Right? So you'd have to write AQ on it. Okay? All right. Let's play the game. Okay? Let's play the game. See how this works. Christina. So I'm going to ask the first person if it's soluble or not. And then the next person, if it is soluble, they'll tell me the ions. So, Christina, is this soluble? If, it's, if she says no, that means we have to put an S on it, right? It is soluble, all right? So it is soluble. So, oh, we should write a little AQ on it first off. And then what ions, Christian, do, does it break up into? ions is it going to break up into? Do you recognize them? There's the K and the nitrate. So it'll break up into a K with a what charge? Plus one. And yeah, did I lose you? Christina, did I lose you? Here. Right. Yeah. So, um, the letter A, letter A, it's, it's soluble. It's soluble. Okay, now, now, again, to, 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 to remove, to really minimize the confusion, always start with rule number one when you're answering any question. Try to block out past history of, of what you've answered in the past. Always just start with rule number one. And if you get your question answered, you quit. See, like, we're trying to answer KNO3. Well, there's a K. And it says soluble. So you quit. So if, it, if it's going to break up, it'll break up into K plus, and what's the other anion? The anion would be nitrate, which is NO3 with a minus. And if you're not sure of the charge, just look at these subscripts, right? They never put, they should put parentheses around there, but they never do. How about lithium carbonate? Stephanie, oh, it's one of those carbonates, but it started at rule number one. It's soluble. We're going to write an AQ on it. Because she looked at group no, rule number one. Gloriana, what would be the ions then? Lithium with what charge? Cations are always positive. So what would be the charge on it? A one. A one. And you can tell because it's just a little one subscript, subscript down there. All right? And keep going. Yeah. OK, now she's close. Do you see where she messed up? One little point where she messed up. Carbonate is CO3 with a negative 2. That's OK. But what does this 2 mean? There's how many lithiums? There's two of them. Yeah, kind of look at it that way. So you can have two pluses and a negative 2, so you get 0. Right. Jessica. Yeah. 
And so was lithium. When, once you get your question answered, you quit. So K plus, it's always soluble, and then you just say, okay. Yeah, when, so whenever, when, whenever, whenever you see group one, sodium, lithium, or potassium, it's always, always, always soluble, and you quit. We're putting AQ because AQ means soluble. S means solid. Little, little s as a subscript means solid. So, yeah, so little s, so these subscripts, let's make sure everyone's clear. The little subscripts, s means solid. What's another word for solid? Insoluble. Okay, now if it's supposed to be soluble, you write what as a subscript? AQ. So then the words are, I guess, dissolves. Or what's the other word? Starts with an S. Soluble. Uh huh. So KNO3, we should really write AQ on it. And lithium carbonate, we should write AQ. And we should really write AQ on ions, too. But very often the book leaves them out, and so do I, because it gets kind of messy. And also, since it is an ion, it has to be hydrated. It has to be dissolved in water. So just because if you write something that has a charge on it, it has to be AQ. So you can write AQ on all the ions if you want, but it gets kind of cluttered. Because they're all hydrated. Okay. Okay, put a two in front of lithium because, oh, look at it this way. If you're going to find the molar mass of this compound, how many lithiums do you have to add up? Two of them. How many carbons? One. How many oxygens? Three. So two lithiums, a carbon, and three oxygens. Good question. You see that? So the subscripts become the stoic become the coefficients, the stoichiometric coefficients. But you can't move the three out because that's carbonate, right? You can't move him. Okay. Let's try another one. Jessica. Soluble or insoluble? We need our rules here. But insoluble. So we got to start at the top. Clean this thing up. Where do we start? Where do we start getting answers in here with this iron acetate compound? Tell me when to stop here, right? Because nothing there. Don't we stop right here? Okay. So that means what subscript should we write on that compound? It has to be AQ. All right? S isn't soluble. S means solid. solid. Burn that in your head. S doesn't mean so soluble. It means solid. All right? I wish they would have, instead of an S, it would have been nice if they used a P for precipitate. Right? <laughs> it would have made things more straightforward. But there's no job security in that. So that doesn't work. Okay. So that means we can't quit. We have to show what its ions are. Bianca, what would be the ions? Well, it would be two FEs if we had a two down here. Oh, where are you putting the two? Did I misunderstand you? Does the two go down here or does the two go up there? On top, because it's iron two. We could have it in both places if there would have been a two right there. But there isn't. There's no two there, so there's no two there. OK. 
Okay. Well, remember, how did, how did we write these formulas? The charge here always goes where? Diagonal. Always went down here. The charge here always goes down there. So for this next compound, this C2H3O2, you can look in the solubility rules to find its charge, find that's acetate and find its charge, or just look down here. It's faster. The subscript for the iron. Right? So it has to be what charge? Negative 1. Okay. Now, do we have any little coefficients in front of these guys? A 2 in front of the acetate. Exactly. Not only would it be the charge, pretend it's a 5. Not only would it be the charge, this guy is now a negative 5, but now you have to have how many irons? Five of them. Right? Because if you're going to find the molar mass of this, it would be 5 times iron plus all this other stuff. But acetate doesn't have a negative 5 charge. It just has a negative 1 charge. Okay. Well, let's clean it up before we... So one more time, this compound, first we had to find it in the list. We found the acetate is what answered the question. That rule number, I think it's two or three. So it's always soluble, so we wrote AQ. So if it's AQ, we have to break it up into its ions. Whoop, that shouldn't be five irons. That should be just one. All right. So you break it up into its ions. And the subscript is the number of them. And it's also the charge on the, other, on the opposing ion. So the kind of dual purpose. So the iron subscript is a 1. So that means, well, this guy must have a negative 1 charge, the acetate. But it also means you only have one iron. And we knew that before when we're finding molar masses. We know there's only one iron. But there's going to be, look at that. If you're going to find the molar mass of the acetate, the molar mass of this whole thing, how many carbons would you actually have to add up? Four of them. That's why you have to have a 2 in front of that acetate. There's two of them. Otherwise, you're not going to have your four carbons. All right, let's try Marco, this copper chloride compound. What would you write? Copper chloride. You said what? Insoluble? Insoluble. Okay, now what rule number? So we can, what, what rule number were you looking at? Okay, so he went to number two because he found the chlorides. And you can write AQ on it almost immediately, but do the, do the check, right? So there's chlorides. See how he found the chlorides? So CuCl2, it looks like it's going to be a safe bet to write AQ on it because it says soluble. But don't be so quick, right? Do you see copper in here? No. So it is AQ. We were right. <laughs> right? I was trying to be devil's advocate here. That's, that's, how, that's how you got to do it. So if you're, going to, if you're going to guess with a chloride, it says they're all soluble. So if you're going to guess with a chloride, a bromide, or an iodide, AQ, soluble. It'll dissolve. Because it's, it's rare that it's not going to. But I'm sure the homework is going to throw some in there where it will form precipitate. Okay, so it's supposed to be AQ. That means we have to break it up. Janet, what would we break that up into? Copper with a what charge? Look, look at the formula. They're always cations, always cations, always anions. So it has to be a positive. It has to be a positive what? The formula tells you. Two. Okay, and keep going. And the chloride, and what is its charge? 
not positive, right? Always positive, always negative. It has to be negative, but negative what? Negative one. And where do you look? You just look down here. Or you can count over to the nobles, but I would just follow the formulas. It's easier, right? This guy has to be a, has to be negative, has to be positive, has to be positive two, has to be negative one. Okay. So do the charges first, then worry about what goes out front. Do we put anything out front? Two chlorides. Good. Right. Okay. How about uh, let's try let's try F. How about F? David, how about F? Is that MGBR2? What would you say for MGBR2? Yeah, there's our bromides. It'd be soluble, right? Because magnesium, magnesium's not listed. AQ. All right, so man, we didn't come in against any of that. I thought that was going to form a solid, but that was wrong. Okay, everybody break up into what? Oh, should right, AQ. Break up into magnesium with a what charge? A plus two. And everybody? BR negatives. How many of them? Two. two of them. Yeah, right? OK, one more thing. There's a bunch you can practice with. But they want us to play this game, that you have CaCl2, calcium chloride, and lead 2 nitrate. OK, they want you to write reactions. And I'll, let me show you the game. It's just a game. You write the molecular means don't break up, right? No ions. Here, all ions, right? And here, cancel the ions. Cancel ions that you can. Okay, not all of them, just cancel ions that you can. When I say all ions except you know, precipitates. So that's kind of the rough draft of what we're going to do. So molecular, write all the reactants. CaCl2, PbNO3, 2. So those are the reactants. They said you're mixing these two. Okay. And that's how you start out. And pretty much what we're going to do is figure out what little subscripts we should write on here. CaCl2. Did we do that one already? Do we write an AQ or an S on them? Yeah, we're going to write AQ because he's right in here. OK, he will be AQ. How about the lead nitrate? Everybody, what would you write there? AQ again, right there, because it's the nitrates. So we'll write AQ on them. So it really doesn't. The reason why we do that is because then this one will be a lot easier. Because if you wrote AQ on it, you can break it up. So now what we do on the product side is you just take the cation with that anion. Right? And this anion with that cation. You just flip them. Just switch them around. So we'll throw the calcium and the nitrate and the lead with the chlorine. Right? So I'm just switching them around. I'm not quite done yet, but throw this cation with the other dude's anion, one cation with the other dude's anion. Right? Just switch them around. We've got to write the formula right, though, because calcium has a what charge? plus 2. Nitrate has a negative 1, so you have to have a little 2 down there, right? 
And how about the lead chloride? You see what was going on there? How would I write its formula? PBCl2. Okay, so now we have to write little subscripts here on these guys. The calcium nitrate. He's a nitrate, right? Nitrates, all nitrates are soluble. So we'll write AQ on him. And then how about the PBCl2? Do we finally have a precipitate somewhere? No. Yes. Oh, it's a chloride. They're all aqueous except for PB2. Finally, we have a precipitate. That took a long time. Okay, so you get to write an S, finally. So now, so that's where all the work is. The rest just falls into place, I think, because all the work was writing out the reactants first and writing whether it's an AQ or an S. It really doesn't matter whether it's AQ or S. You just write out what it is, and then the products, you switch them around, and write A, Q, or S again. And then the ionic, after you did all that work in the molecular equation, if you ever wrote an A, Q, you just break it up. That's all that means. So what would it look like? Well, you have to break them up like we did. This would be calcium and two chlorides. All right, because we wrote A, Q on them. We wrote A, Q on the lead nitrate, so you break him up just like we did earlier, and two nitrates. And we wrote AQ on the calcium nitrate, so we gotta break him up. But we did not write an AQ on the lead chloride. So do not break him up. And make sure you keep that S on there to show you why you didn't break him up. Everything with an AQ, you break up. Okay? So what it looks like are all ions except you have the solid. So. Now, net ionic, you look at both sides and see what you can cancel. So, looks like we have a calcium. He's gone. The two nitrates are gone. And you can't cancel anything else, so you're left with two Cl negatives and a lead. is PBCl2. And that's what it always looks like. It always looks like the solid on one side and then it's ions that made it up on the other side. And they call that the net ionic equation. Okay. Okay. So one more time when when you're writing these these out, right? Here's, here's another one. Sodium sulfate. So you write it out. You write out barium nitrate. Okay. Oh, I kind of skipped, right? So you, sodium and the sulfate, barium and the nitrate. So get the formula right, though. Sodium has a plus. This guy has a negative two. So that means I have to have a two there. And this is the one down there. The barium is in group two. So I'm going to have to have a two down there. All right. Okay. So the game plan is to first write AQ. Well, I guess we should switch them around too, right? Put the sodium with the nitrate. And the barium with the sulfate. Okay. So that's the starting point. Then you write AQ or S on stuff, right? Everything that you can. Everything should have an AQ or an S on it. That's, and that'll be your molecular equation. Oh, we're not quite balanced, I guess. Shouldn't we have a two there? All right, so that'll be our molecular equation. Make sure you write down AQ or S on these guys. And then the ionic. Anything you don't AQ on, break them up. And the net ionic, cancel what you can. Okay? And remember the, 
when you're figuring out a whether it's a q or s always start at the very top okay always start at the very top yes um, Go ahead. The a has a charge of yes because it's in group two okay but we have put that at the end of the just put oh because this is a plus oh good point that's a plus two that's a negative two they end up being two and two but they're the simplest ratio yeah, good point. So you have to erase them. So come by. I'll be glad to help you out with this stuff. There's a lot there.